What do you think people don't often understand or consider when they think about the job of a choreographer? Choreography, honestly, it's easy. When I say it's easy, it's like you're putting a, a series of movement together and you can make it look beautiful. But what makes something memorable and iconic is when it fits the person in the right way and they execute it. It's the individuality within it that just encompasses who they are. Tanisha, I feel like we can't even begin a conversation about your career, about dance, without talking about where you're from and your culture, because it informs so much of what you do. Yes. So I understand you grew up in Toronto, but That's with Caribbean correct. roots? Yes, to be specific, Jamaican roots. Okay, my rapid. mom and my dad are both from Jamaica. What was their journey to Toronto like? How did they end up in Toronto? My mom was in Toronto first. Um, I know they were dating and together in Jamaica, but it wasn't until they moved to Toronto that they got married. My parents wanted to expand and broaden their horizons. Mm -hmm. And of course, the story of just making a better life for themselves and for their children. So what was it like growing up as a first gen Jamaican in Toronto? I honestly felt like I was raised in Jamaica mm -hmm. because my parents still kept all the culture and instilled within the three of us. I have an older sister and a younger brother. My parents spoke Patois in the house. When we went outside, of course, they'll twang, but I didn't feel any big separation from how my parents were raised. It actually felt like we grew up in Jamaica, but with cold weather. Right. So we, still, we still ate the same food. Music was a predominant thing in the house. My dad, is a DJ, just like in the dance halls in Jamaica and the street parties and stuff, my parents would hold those parties in our basement. Mm -hmm. Being raised in Toronto, it's a huge melting pot for different countries and cultures. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if you are your culture first and then Canadian. What were some of the music that you grew up with that your dad would play in the Caribbean? Okay, let me name some records. Of course, Duran Duran, you had Climax, you have James Brown, a lot of country, Kenny Rogers. You can't talk about Dolly Parton without my mom ringing her ear like, oh, you know this song? Those songs are the ones that tear down the house in any dance hall or Jamaican party. So I got a lot of education in my basement when it comes to music. So how did that diverse backdrop of music you grew up with, how did that inform your approach to dance later on? Mm. Being raised in a house that had music constantly and all genres of music constantly playing just allowed me to appreciate music and movement and telling the story. When I was younger, I used to have a stuttering problem, but I found that it was through music and dancing where I was able to express myself and connect without having to speak. Wait, so when did you fall in love with dance? Do you remember that moment? I do. I that? do because it was the time when my mom came down the stairs and I was dancing in the basement. I had the lights off except for one light, um, which is where my dad's DJ booth was while he was playing. Mm -hmm. And I was dancing with my shadow. And my mom said, now, that's my girl. I don't even know really what she meant by it, but it just showed me that what I thought was silly and where I found comfort was actually a beautiful thing and people could admire. How did you make the decision to invest in this natural gift that you had? What was the catalyst? I think it had to be the attention. Hmm. Because the attention on me wasn't negative, it was positive. My mom used to always, and my dad, call me down and be like, come down the stairs and dance for Auntie So-So and for Uncle So-So <laughs> and whatnot. But mind you, I never thought of it as a career. I just knew that I loved to do it. So let's get into the early young adult years. Where do you end up going to college? And okay. what takes you through the friendships that would actually kind of form the foundation for what will become a career. I went to University of Windsor and I went there on a partial track scholarship. I used to always travel over to Detroit to go to the clubs. So I got to find like that style, like the juke and all that. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So um, there's a dance troupe out there called Do That, led by the amazing Luther Brown, who became my first dance teacher. 
he had a hip hop dance crew. And how I ended up joining this is because a guy that was in one of my classes named Kwame saw me dancing in a club. And he's like, you would be so good for this crew call that I'm a part of called Do That. And I think my audition was Luther actually seeing me in the club dancing. That is what started my career in learning how to do choreography. At this time, was this a hobby or were you trying to build a career? In my mind's eye, I was going to the Olympics. I was a track runner. Mm. And during that time, I was also focusing on physical therapy because I wanted to work for an athletic team. So that's what I was going to school for and that's where my brain was at. I did not even know you could have a career as a professional dancer. And Luther Brown was one of those people that helped you yes. transition from freestyle to choreo. What was that transition like, oh learning more God. about the regimented style of choreo without losing the freedom that you feel when you're just freestyling? I loved it so much. Yeah. Um, understanding the language of counts, it's another language when you're mm. counting rhythmically to put a piece of movement together, hmm. hence choreography. But he also used to count with just sounds. So he'd make the sounds sound like the movement that you're doing. So up is like a uh, mm, when you drop. Uh, 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 uh. It was familiar to me because that's how I heard music. Mm. So I can hear all the little reflections and the drum hits and the snares and here and there. So because I'm a true freestyler, uh -huh. I forget a lot of my choreography, but the rhythm that he taught me, I kept repeating that rhythm, and that is what allowed me to identify the movement with the rhythm. At what point did you start to land more professional gigs? During this time, while I was dancing in Dudat, we did a lot of like surprise performances. So we'd be the opening act for when, say, Maya would come or any other artist to Toronto. It was at that time when I realized, oh, okay, this could be something because I see dancers are flying in with these artists and they're dancing with them. Hmm. Then there's also the fact that I started doing a lot of music videos with Little X and Hype Williams. Well, Little X introduced me to Hype Williams and the Benny Booms and whatnot. So I started understanding, okay, well, you can get paid for these jobs. And it wasn't until I got asked to do this Maya tour, I always thought, okay, I'm coming back next semester. Mm -hmm. And I'll come back next semester. And it wasn't until the full year passed that I realized I'm not going back. So what did you learn from that experience? It made me realize that I'm in love with what I do. I started doing all these jobs in between while on tour. I also got to work with Fatima Robinson with Aaliyah. Not only do you flourish as a dancer, but you get an opportunity to choreograph. Yeah. What was that first opportunity and how did it come about? Hype, I think, was the first person that ever said to me, you are probably one of the best choreographers I've ever seen. And I said, Hype, I don't choreograph. Hmm. He's like, that's what you think but I see you're going to be a great choreographer. And he was the first person to call me up and asked me to choreograph a music video for Left Eye. And I said, no. I said, Why? Because I, I can't chore, I was like, I don't even know the first thing about choreography. Then X calls me. And Hype is like, oh, you can do it for <laughs> That's X, exactly what he did. Do it for me. That is exactly what he did. He's like, it's all love because that's my brother, but I told you. He's like, just remember, I'm the first one to tell you this. And I said, I'll never forget that. It's, it's, it's on the record. It's yeah. in the record now. Yeah, exactly. Like, how do you even begin something like this when you already feel like you're out of your depth? So I'll tell you one thing. A lot of it is a blur because I was that nervous about mm. it. But what I do remember is the process. And the first person I called, the only person I called was Luther. He laughed. He's like, you can do this. And he sat with me in rehearsal and he told me to freestyle. And he's like, okay, cool. Now that freestyle, what did you like? I said, I like this move and that move. He's like, okay. Now do that move and this move together. I was like, okay. And he taught me how to stitch the choreography together from the best moves that I came up with. The idea of it was hard for me, but the movement was easy because this is a movement that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. It's Dance Hall, it's Sean Paul, Give Me The Light. That song was out 
years prior to it becoming popular in the United States. Mm. So I just stitched together what I thought was right and we did the shoot. Just give me the light and pass the joe. Post another buckle of more. Yeah, let me know my sides and I got to know which one is gonna catch my flow. That's a celebration extra I like, come on. And we got on camera and we did a little celebration. This is a joke and it ended up in the music video. So after the success of that, what was the career like for you next? Coming off the success of the Give Me the Light was like a roller coaster. Everybody wanted to have a little Lex video and choreographed by Tanisha. When you talk about your early career, you had viral dances before there were viral dances. Yes. Music videos were where we got the cues on what to do during different parts. And right. you were one of the minds that helped to craft what the culture was doing yeah. at that time without there even being our phones to look at to learn Max. these dances. All we had was music videos back then where we can see ourselves, we can see our culture, we can see what's happening in the streets. And after Give Me the Light, I do find like that completely went to another scale because people just wanted to dance. The music changed. The artists were now making songs to actually have people dancing and they're calling the songs lean back or whatever the case may be. So it was a huge nucleus, like everything was together. So from the music, the dance, and the title of the song. And I remember it was L.A. Reid that said to me, X introduced me to him at a party, said, oh, and this is Tanisha Scott. She's the one that choreographed Give Me Light. And he got on his knees and was like, thank you for bringing back fun to the club. He's like, what y'all did on that music video changed a lot for us musically. Who did you end up working with outside of dance hall space, post the Sean Paul? So outside of dance hall, there was Whitney Houston. I got to work with Beyonce. I got to work with Alicia Keys. I got to work with Eve. I got to work with Neo. I got to work with Music Soul Child, with Ludacris, mm. 50 Cent, Jay-Z, Pharrell. Um, Rihanna, Rihanna. you haven't her already. Duh, yes. <laughs> what was it like yes. working with Riri, especially another island oh. girl? What was that experience like? That is my heart and soul. Yeah. There's nothing like a rehearsal with two West Indian women just doing their thing. It felt like home, where we're always like, can you believe this is what we're doing? Talk me through those sessions with B. How did that work out? Everything she does is very intentional. As a choreographer, I try to read this person and make the best version of them. She was like, I'm becoming you right now. Wow. It's the first time I ever had somebody like, want to become or do what I do. Rather than trying to have you tailor it so that they can do it, she's like, I'm gonna mimic everything you're doing it to precision. And it made you want to go harder. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then you work with people who aren't dancers. Yes. Drake, Hotline <laughs> Bling. How do you still help him through what you need his movements to be for that video? What was your process like for him? You know what? When it comes to sports, mm -hmm. that's his thing. So I just equate a lot of sports movement. So running is still movement. Running can be a dance. Okay. Playing basketball can uh... be a dance. Talking on your phone can be a dance. You know what I'm saying? Uh... Like playing tennis can be. <laughs> My light bulb's just going yeah. <laughs> So that's what those movements got inspired by. Yeah. Just giving him that yeah. nugget. Yeah, and he already knew how he felt. The thing with Drake is, he just needs a mirror. When we lock in, that's why we dance together. It's like, okay, here we go. Here we go. We find a great moment. We're just in tune with each other and we just let go and let be because that's what's right. Was it always the plan for you to be in that video too? It was for him, yes. <laughs> he said you He gotta, said that, what'd yeah. What'd he say, what'd he say? All his life, mm -hmm. he's always wanted to have a give me the light moment. He wanted to be the guy dancing with the girl in the white. That's why I was in the video with him. Wow. His childhood dream, he said. Wow. I was like, childhood, he ain't that older than me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's why, that's why I was in it. How do you remain inspired? I work in movement first with artists that have a sound, a brand, a story. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't easy for me to articulate the things that I wanted to say verbally, mm -hmm. I did it through my body. 
So that is my service to somebody else. That's what motivates me. Is that bitch a clock? Yeah, it's thick, 30. You've worked on About Damn Time and To Be Loved with Lizzo. When you began to work on the video for About Damn Time and the choreography for it, how did you first approach that? So we listened to the song in her car, which is really cool. And I just remember the way it made me feel. And I was like, oh, this sounds good and old school. Yes, it so felt good. It felt real <laughs> good. So from that, I knew that this just needs to be a fun song. The choreography should feel uplifting, fun, and simple enough where people can vibe it out more than a one and two and three and four. This is like a one, two, three, four, hit it, five, six, mm. seven, eight, and switch, as opposed to up, down, here we go. It was that. It was a pocket song. And then I went into a room with her and we started dancing. I started to extract the movement that I liked on her that felt good, and it made her smile. And then when she came back to rehearsal, she felt damn good doing the routine because she's like, it feels like me, and I'm like, yeah because it's a part of your DNA, what you put into it. Turn up the music, turn down the lights. I've got a feeling I'm gonna be all right, okay. All right, it's about damn time. Let's talk about your role as a creative director. Talk to me about some of the projects you've worked on that you're really proud of. I think I'm most proud of my work with Cardi B, my work with her, absolutely. And with Lizzo, those three, amazing stars are artists. They are three completely different women. And it's just painting the picture. I do the choreography as well as come up with the actual idea of what the set is going to look like. From the lights to the set to the song choices, the outfits to the camera movements. It's the whole shebang. I want to talk about your passion for multi-camera directing as well. What are those projects and how did you even get in that space? To me, I find a lot of shows, as much as you choreograph, you may not see everything. Like, okay, a lot of people will miss. Oh, they saw that person jump up and down off of this fake windowsill and they show the audience instead. Like, outside of those things, I think it just is an all-encompassing thing to like shoot what you've created, how you see it. I've learned this eye from all my director mentors. Okay. So it's like, where do you put the audience's eye? What do you want them to focus on so that they get the same feeling and experience that those who are sitting and watching it live get? So did you become passionate about this from having experiences where there was a key dance element that got missed because that was the moment that the editor or the director decided to cut to another. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me just do this myself. Um, yes, that is definitely a part of it. It's just oh. um, missing many moments, many moments that could have changed the, the storyline or could have changed the experience for the viewers. I just want anybody to miss anything. What is the biggest lesson that you've learned about yourself as you go from discipline to discipline? I feed off of things that aren't expected of me. I want to do the jobs and the portion of a job where people didn't think that I could do. I've choreographed about four different routines with ballerinas, and I'm not a trained dancer. Hmm. I've done a tap routine. I've done all sorts of things and worked in all sorts of genres where people think, okay, you're just dance hall and hip hop. I'm like, um, no, I'm not, I can do more. So what does Tanisha Scott want her legacy to be? I would love to be remembered as somebody who was authentic and true and authentic to the people that she works with. I wanna make sure that everybody gets the best version of themselves when I come into the room and they surprise themselves yeah. with the height of what they can do and what they see. I want people to also not take themselves so seriously. None of the things I've ever worked on, from Hotline Bling to Give Me the Light to any of the Rihanna music videos, 
were like, oh, we're set to break a record or to make this happen. No, we just were being true and authentic. And I want my legacy to be that that is enough, literally. The truth will always, always be enough. I love dance so much that no matter how many side swipes I got, I still kept going. I didn't see it as I'm gonna make a change for the next person, the next. Because I loved it, I just did it <laughs> and I bared it and then I kept bringing people along with me and giving people opportunities that never had the opportunity before. Letting people see themselves the way they've never seen themselves before. So I think it was a purpose driven life that I didn't actually foresee because I just let go and just let be. That is what legacy is, is change. Changing the status quo and doing great work, challenging yourself, and now we can only do better. <laughs>